Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you what I consider to be my 10 favorite video games of all time. Now, do keep in mind, I'm not saying that these are the 10 best video games of all time. This is just my own personal list for games that I've really enjoyed over my life. Also, I should probably mention that there could potentially be spoilers in the videos ahead. I'm not really showing you guys anything story related when it comes to these games, but I feel like I should warn you regardless. Now, one last thing before I show you these games, I'm not actually ranking most of these in a particular order. This list is more so just my 10 favorite games. There are a few that I prefer over the others, but generally I just consider them each to be great in their own way. Hopefully that makes sense. So anyway, let's go ahead and move into the first game I have on this list. The first game on this list is probably the most obvious of them all, and this is Minecraft. I've been making Minecraft videos for about 7 years now and have been playing the game for even longer than that. In fact, add a few more years and I will have been playing Minecraft for about half my life. Which is pretty crazy to think about to be honest. Now, there's a reason that Minecraft for all this time has managed to stay popular. Sure, it gets updated fairly regularly with some pretty cool updates and stuff like that, but that's not what I believe is keeping it on top. What really keeps Minecraft popular and thriving is its community. Minecraft itself is kind of this just blank slate that you can turn into many different things. There's hardly any true objectives in the game, and generally it's up to the player to kind of give themselves objectives. At least when it comes to vanilla Minecraft, really, the game will last about as long as you make it last. It's essentially up to the player to decide how long the game is going to stay fun for. But it's outside of vanilla that things start to get pretty interesting. The amount of mods available for Minecraft is absolutely absurd, and the amount of servers you can connect to that have unique and fun mini games or game modes to play it's pretty fantastic too. There's just so much content available for Minecraft and all of this comes from the community. Now, player created content aside, the game does still have quite a few areas where it really shines. Personally, I think Minecraft has some pretty great music that fits the game quite nicely. And imitators aside, it's still one of the most unique games out there. So yeah, I truly do believe when it comes to Minecraft, it's a good game, but what makes it great is the players. Next up we have Red Dead Redemption 2. And I'm just gonna start off by saying that this game has one of the most detailed worlds I've ever played in a video game. When you're exploring, the world truly feels alive. Wildlife is constantly around you no matter where you are in the world. And you'll also come across many people and these encounters can go very differently depending on what kind of person you've ran into. The map is also one of the most diverse maps I've played when it comes to just different kinds of areas you can explore. There's everything from snowy mountains to deserts. So you won't run into the issue that some other games have where everything just kind of looks the same. Now, I must say that Red Dead is probably one of the most detailed games I've ever played. Honestly, I would sometimes come across a feature, and I would just sit there wondering, how did they even decide to add that to the game? That's probably why it was delayed for an entire year. Probably the most well-known of these absurd features is the, uh, realistic physics male horses have. Red Dead also features a nice long campaign, which isn't the best I've ever played, although it's still very good. But yeah, if you've been thinking of playing this game for a while, I'd absolutely recommend trying it. It's an amazing open-world western game that's well worth playing, even just to explore experience the world. Next up we have Fallout 4. And this game is kind of a mixed bag for a lot of people out there, but it was my first Fallout game and I honestly quite enjoyed it. I really didn't know what to expect heading into this game other than it was just a world you explore that's been completely eviscerated by nuclear bombs, and I really enjoyed the experience. The main quest itself is decent, but a lot of the side quests are actually a lot of fun. Aside from the Radiant quests, I really don't like Radiant quests. I mean, honestly, how many settlers need my help? Aside from those though, they're generally pretty interesting. Now, most of this world does feel kind of just the same, but at the same time it kind of makes sense since the world was blasted by a nuclear bomb, everything probably should be mostly dead. And there really is a fair amount of interesting areas, especially in the Glowing Sea, and honestly I wish the Glowing Sea had more because I just loved that area and thought it was awesome. But considering it's ground zero for a nuclear strike, I suppose it makes sense that there isn't a huge amount of content there. And another thing I really like about this game, which should come as no surprise, is it's got a lot of mods available for it. When mods are executed properly for a game, they can just make the experience so much better. And it's especially vital for a game like Fallout 4 to have mods, considering Bethesda isn't exactly known to make the cleanest games. So overall, I'd say that while the game doesn't have the best graphics, and it doesn't have the best story, and it can definitely be very janky, yet overall, the game is just a lot of fun to play. 
Next up we have Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and this was my first Assassin's Creed game I played, and is still the only one that I consider to be a really good game. While Origins was pretty fun, it just didn't really feel that special, and especially more so for Odyssey. Black Flag on the other hand when it came out was truly a really great experience. Even at this point its graphics are pretty good, back then they were mind blowing, and I personally just love this kind of setting. One of my favorite things about this game is how it's pretty much two experiences in one. On one hand you get to be an assassin, do things like roof running, following people around trying to remain undetected, and taking down enemies silently. While on the other hand, it's a fully-fledged pirate game. You can head out to the seas, plunder other ships, search for treasure, and listen to your crew sing their sailor songs. It was a borderline strange combo that ended up working really nicely. Like I said though, I don't think Ubisoft has really made a great Assassin's Creed since, and I hope they do eventually return to making games a little more similar to this one. Next up we have Forza Horizon, and in the past I had already enjoyed the original Forza, so all the way back to I think Forza 2 was the first one I played, I just always found them to be very enjoyable games. And then Horizon came around expanding on Forza and turned it into something quite different, yet so much fun. Rather than just selecting a race from a menu and starting it from there, you actually had to drive around this big world and find the races. And this game introduced races such as the ones where you race an airplane or something like that, and you know it was just a completely unique experience for me when it comes to racing games. And as always expected from Forza's at the time the graphics were really good and the cars just feel amazing to drive. Since this game they've gone on to make three more Forza Horizons and they've introduced many other cool features such as actually being able to go off road. I would say for the most part that the newer Forza's are overall better games but there are a few things that I still liked more in the original. The first Forza Horizon had arguably my favorite map, it'd be a toss up between this and the third one, and I also much prefer the way they started off the first game. In the first Forza Horizon this story essentially starts with you overhearing on the radio that there's some spots available in the event, and you pretty much have to try and race and be one of the first people to get there. And this game doesn't just start you off with some supercar, which I really prefer. I don't like just starting with some amazing car in the beginning of the game. I want to earn that car. But yeah, overall, Forza Horizon 1 and really the Forza Horizons in general are just amazing racing games, and especially a lot of fun with a steering wheel. Next up we have Subnautica, and this game was one of the biggest surprise games out there for me. I had practically no knowledge about what this game was aside from just an ocean exploration game, and honestly going into a game like this with very little knowledge can make it even better, because you know everything remains a mystery to you. And in my opinion, this is the best survival crafting game since Minecraft. The environments are both beautiful and terrifying at the same time, and same with the ambience. And don't let the Eve 10 plus rating fool you, this game can be horrifying sometimes. Pretty much every single creature in this ocean actually wants to kill you, and there's only so much you can do to fight back. Really, you should probably just run away. And one thing I really like about this game is it doesn't particularly hold your hand. You actually have to go out and find where different materials are located. The game itself is just beautiful and has very smooth gameplay in my opinion, and I have to say, if you're considering getting this game, I would recommend you go into it how I did. Don't watch any playthroughs of it, just dive right in and experience the game for yourself. Really that'd be my recommendation for most games, honestly. Next up we have Call of Duty. There's only three that I didn't play a huge amount, and these include Infinite Warfare, Ghosts, and World War II, and to a lesser extent Black Ops 4. But other than those games, I have played a lot of Call of Duty. I've been playing Call of Duty since World at War, and if I had to pick a favorite, I really couldn't. I could give you some of my favorites, which include Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops 1 through 3, and honestly, probably the current Modern Warfare game, although it's got a lot of issues. Really, I think part of the reason I particularly enjoy this one is because I actually have it on PC, and I just find games to play a lot better on PC. And overall, I tend to like Treyarch's Call of Duties more, because while I do really enjoy the multiplayer, I enjoy zombies just as much. Call of Duty Zombies for a long time has been one of my favorite things to do in video games, so I'm especially looking forward to Cold War coming out later this year. But yeah, I just really enjoy how buttery smooth the gameplay in Call of Duty feels, especially the Treyarch-made games. Now, the final three games on this list are the three games that I actually think have the best video game soundtracks of all the games I've played. And a great soundtrack for a video game really goes a long way for me, and I think makes the game just that much better. There are a couple other games on this list that I would consider to be a tier below, such as Minecraft and Subnautica, but overall these next three games are the three that I truly consider to be just absolutely fantastic when it comes to its music. And anyway, the next game up is Skyrim. Skyrim still, to this day, nine years later, is a must-play game. Of all the games I've played, 
played, I don't know if any other game has just captivated me like Skyrim did when I first played it. It just felt majestic. It's kind of one of those strange experiences where you almost feel nostalgic for it after the first time you play it. And really, everything about this game is just captivating. The world looks incredible, locations essentially litter the map, and like I mentioned earlier, the music. The music is just wonderful in this game. And this is the one game that I've personally played that actually matches Minecraft when it comes to modding. Skyrim can be absolutely transformed with mods. And you know, just like Minecraft, that's partially what's kept this game alive for so long, its modding community. Personally, I think more games need to allow more modding in their games because it allows the game to stay relevant for much longer. I think it's no secret that I really love mods for games, and that definitely applies to Skyrim. But really, Skyrim, with or without mods, is a truly incredible game. Next up we have Halo, and I'm gonna cheat a little bit and just say Halo Master Chief Collection, just so I can get all the Halos involved. If I had to narrow it down to two though, I'd say Halo 2 and 3. Now, the Halo series is probably the longest video game series I've been playing. I've actually been playing Halo since before Halo 2 came out. I was so young at that point that I couldn't even figure out how to finish some of the missions. But truly, I've been playing Halo for most of my life and it has a special place in my heart. And probably my favorite thing about Halo is its music. Of all the games on this list, I would put this at number one for my favorite video game music. Music. Halo's music is legendary, and while it would be a fun game without it, it just wouldn't be the same. So Marty O'Donnell, if you're out there, I just want to thank you for making absolute masterpiece music for Halo. Truly, I think that he's what's missing most from the newest Halo games. And anyway, aside from the music, I think Halo 2 has the best campaign, and Halo 3 had a truly wonderful multiplayer. Playing Halo 2 on Legendary is an experience. Honestly, you don't know true pain unless you've been 360 no-scoped by a jackal at least 100 times. I would dare say I've never faced a more terrifying enemy than jackals in Halo 2. And Halo 3's multiplayer was probably the first online game I really played. And it really was just so much fun back then. People made all kinds of unique game modes to play in Forge, and it was for the most part a wonderful community. And while some games have since done custom games better than Halo 3, such as its successor Halo Reach, Halo 3 was really ahead of its time. Before I get to the final game on this list, here's some honorable mentions. My first honorable mention is Stronghold Crusader, and this game is actually ancient. At one point, I played it on a laptop that was like an inch and a half thick, and it honestly probably didn't even run that bad. In this game, your goal was to build a castle and try and keep your peasants happy and give them jobs in order to keep yourself sustained, all while surviving the onslaught of your enemies. And if you'd like to give this game a try, you can literally find it online for like $2, and there's actually an updated version of this game, which is pretty much the same thing, just with better graphics. Next, we have Madden, and honestly Madden is generally a pretty terrible game, and I mostly love it just because I love football. It can be a lot of fun to play, but at the same time EA is absurdly lazy with this game, which makes it kind of hard to play. Regardless though, I still do enjoy playing it. But at the same time, if another company made a football game and they actually cared, I'd probably enjoy that more. Castle Crashers is my next honorable mention, and, and honestly I'd consider this to be the best game over all of these honorable mentions. It's a side-scroller game with some pretty fun and unique gameplay, and it's especially fun to play with other people. And if you haven't played this game, I'd definitely recommend checking it out. Next, for probably a little bit of a controversial pick, I'll have Fortnite as an honorable mention. Now, when I include this on the list, I'm talking more about, say, pre-season 4 Fortnite. At that time, I honestly found Fortnite to be an extremely fun game, and most of you would probably secretly agree. At this point, I still wouldn't even really consider it a bad game. There's just so many other games I would rather be playing, to be honest. And finally, my last honorable mention would be Rock Band, or Guitar Hero, or really any kind of game that's similar to it. Honestly, it doesn't really matter that much to me, as long as it's this style of game. I mean, in this particular footage, I'm playing Clone Hero, which is a free version on the computer. And really, I enjoy this game just for the challenge of it. It's a lot of fun, and I do think I'm at least pretty good at it. And now, finally, for the last game on my list, and quite possibly my favorite game of all time, we have The Witcher 3. This game gets practically everything right. The world is incredible, the story is captivating, I mean even its minigame Gwent is absolutely amazing. And just like the previous two games, its music is top notch. And trust me when I say this, this game is so content packed, just so full of things to do, it can almost feel overwhelming. I've played through this game twice, and each time has taken me about 150 hours to complete. And the great thing is, none of the game really feels like it's just there to add playtime. Everything you do, ranging from the main storyline to the side quests, feels like it should be there. And even by 2020 standards, this game still looks fantastic. It's truly a beyond incredible game, and there's a reason so many people are looking forward to Cyberpunk this year, and that's because Witcher simply set the bar so high. Trust me when I say this, if Cyberpunk comes even anywhere close to The Witcher, it will absolutely be taking a spot in this top 10 list. The Witcher 3 is truly an incredible game, and absolutely worth a playthrough.
All right, that's the end of this video. A little bit longer than usual. I do hope you guys enjoyed. And let me know in the comments what your top 10 games are. I'd definitely love to see your lists and even check out some of the games you guys recommend. And yeah, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching.